The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Okay, welcome back everyone live here in Las Vegas. This is EMC World 2014, this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. Our next guest is Guy Church with EMC, president of DeepPad, Data Protection Availability Division. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> All right, DeepPad. All right, do you have an iPad? With that uh, deep I, head? I, I do, and you can get a freebie <laughs> as well. So yeah, we just changed our name. So obviously you, you've been introducing us as the BRS piece, right. and now we've just expanded, and we figured we'll every we'll two or you three years to change the name, right? That's yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll shake it up and choose something else. <laughs> so it's, so uh, what's the shake up? This? What's the big news? What do you guys got going on? Obviously, uh, we've been following you guys. Um, the protection around Viper was. We saw a lot of traction around that. You're seeing the conversation around protection, recovery, and availability, not just kind of an afterthought. What's the, what's the trend that you guys are hearing? Well, so there's a couple of things, and we'll, we'll stick on the name because it's kind of entertaining, and again, it is an internal thing, right? Yeah. So it's, it was backup recovery systems, and then what we did is we took on board the RecoverPoint and VPlex technology, and they're in higher layers of abstraction, so they're basically in you know, the data protection piece and then continuous availability, and so you know, we really we wanted to take a nod to the availability piece. Right, so in other words, data protection and availability division, that was kind of it. Yeah. The reason we brought it in is because now we have that full spectrum in a single business unit that's dedicated, wakes up every single morning to make it better, yeah. and it's all from deep archive, in other words, sort of cold storage all the way up to you know, total availability, continuous availability. And then how do you mesh or integrate these to provide yeah. a better level of service across your customers' use cases. So that take us, sense? yeah, it totally does. Now take us through some of the conversations internally. I can only imagine, we have to move up the stack, we have to move up the stack, we have to be more relevant. How did that play out? How did you guys get up the stack? Is it just, you said, hey, let's just do it. Was a reorg going on? And there's a specific technologies that you vectored into. No, it's, uh, it's pretty simple, actually. I was playing poker. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is no joke. I was playing poker with Brian. If you've ever played with Brian Gallagher, he's absolutely rubbish. And, and so, so What's I won. What's his tell? Yeah, well, actually, <laughs> he chooses a cigar. He, he kind of does this, you know. He itches his ear, and, and so I ended up with a couple of absolute gems, you know. But but in in reality, you look at it and say, well, the organization kind of has to figure out how you center around a gravitational pull. And for us, is we've dedicated towards data protection, and so it makes absolute sense to bring these into the portfolio and then drive the synergies across it. Well, okay. like recover point is obviously one great asset that you. What, how, I mean, you've won on the poker game. Presumably. Yeah, exactly. Or, and or insisted <laughs> yeah, as a condition so of your employment, I'm not sure which. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll go with the poker game. Yeah. And, and so, so yeah, so RecoverPoint came in and then obviously uh, VPlex came in. So that gives us then that complete spectrum. Right, and allows you to talk to customers in that aspect in terms of building solutions, right? And it, yeah, yeah. it was missing uh, yeah, yeah. before that. I mean, not that you weren't you know, going to market as with your brethren, but it allows you to do certain things. Can you talk about that a little bit? How it sort of changes the way in which you're able to develop products or develop solutions? Well, so, so I think, you know, obviously it's emerging, you know, because they're, they're newly inside of the organization. Uh, we were all already working very, very closely from a technology point of view right. with the RecoverPoint team. And in fact, um, you know, joking apart with um, Brian, uh, we actually have some announcements we'll be bringing out in the second half of the year, specifically around that and using some of the technologies around RecoverPoint, which is going to be pretty groundbreaking. And, and we were working so closely with them that, that it was almost a key tenet of our technology moving forward. So it made absolute sense to bring it into the family from an engineering perspective, because you know, if you've got tighter synergy and closer working relationship, then you can execute against it. And then you know it, it, the same team was really executing against the the higher levels of abstraction, which is continuous availability, and that was really around VPlex. And VPlex is getting much tighter to recover point, and so you know you've actually got sort of the you know the the triactor effect, which is is really good. And you know uh, we were chatting earlier about consumption models, yep. and so we've seen and you've talked to Stephen ad nauseum over the protection storage architecture. You know, and what we really say is we translate the uh, protection storage architecture and then how does that lay into consumption models? So not traditionally talking about, you know, uh, platform one, two or three or SDDC, but really looking at and saying, we have to provide that full spectrum. In other words, from cold storage to continuous availability, 
for someone on premise, for somebody in a virtualized environment, for somebody in a hybrid environment, or for somebody in born in the cloud. And that's kind of where you get into your futures and exciting stuff because you're looking and saying, we have a great portfolio, it's robust, and we can handle the first three pretty well. Now, if you then say, well, actually your data center is now the cloud, how do you provide the same level of visibility, control, and access, and mobility for a cloud? So how do you do cloud to cloud backup? How do you do cloud to cloud DR? How do you do basically callback? So can you restore from it fast as you want to? You know, and that, that's where it gets really interesting. And that's why having the technologies inside of one binding enables us to you know, think a little bit smarter, focus down, execute hard. So I wonder if we could come back to consumption models. How, how are consumption models changing in your view? Well, so, so uh, uh, the keynote I just went through or tried to attempt to muddle through, um, and, and we drew up an analogy to music. You know, and, and again, it's, it's yet another one of those silly obsessions that I have. But if you think of music, music basically, the, the intent of music's never changed. So in other words, a song is a song, but the way in which we consume it is different. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. So in other words, you, you kind of, you go to a live concert, that was the only way you could do it, then it goes on to record, then it goes on to reel, then tape, and then it goes on to disc, and it goes through, right? So, so music is a constant, and, and the consumption model of music changes. And in exactly the same way, data, has that same effect. So data is a constant, and data grows. So in other words, the size and scale of data grows, and, and but the consumption model changes. So how you want to consume, you know. And and one of the neat things about the business unit we have is we have the investment to ensure that a customer, regardless of whether they're sitting in the mainframe era, you know. In other words, they still have that. And by the way, you know, mainframe still growing, the same as vinyl still growing, but it's mm -hmm. it's somewhat boutique in industries. Mm -hmm. You know, 100% of the top 25 banks still use this you know, as, as one of their primary platforms. And this is where I struggle with things like Platform 3. I think it's a really good descriptor. But if I have a mainframe at the back of a Platform 3 application, is the mainframe then Platform 1 or is it Platform 3? So I kind of look at it and say, it's basically <laughs> a consumption model, and then you basically have a use case on the top of it, right? So, so we see this, you know, this full kind of plethora and this full extension right away across. And, and by rounding out that portfolio, you guys have talked about now uh, for a while about data protection as a service. Steven sort of yeah. put forth that vision at EMC World, I think two years ago. So now you've got the piece parts of the portfolio to tie into that so as a customer I can dial up or dial down based on my cost requirements, my RPO, my RTO, or, or however I think about it, is yeah. that right? Yeah, yeah, and, and, and then you want to do things like you're creating a, a, a proxy or like a hypervisor for cloud. So in other words, cloud might be something a customer wants to do. They want to see it as a tier-based storage. They might want to drop onto something like an AWS and use the cost economics of there, but perhaps the subscription price goes up from there because you know that's on the race to zero. And at some point, it's going to come back up again. And if it does, they might look at it and say, it's not the level of service I want. So you want to be able to scrape it off and put it somewhere else. But if it's actually you know uh, backup data or, or at rest data, it's easy. But what happens if it's transactional and it's sitting out there? You still need that ability. And so, so uh, again, this is why you really look at it and say, you know, you want replication technology with the backup data, but you're really having the concept of backup as a service and then data protection as a service, but you need the synergy. So you're defining the, the continuum in the customer terms, including yeah. things like the public cloud. You're yeah. not excluding that in your no, definition. No, no. no, I mean, and, and you know, I'm not a, a detractor or an advocate of cloud. I just basically see it as yet another consumption model because the reality is, you're talking to customers, and they're going to look at it and say, "I decide what to do." The same as I wouldn't turn around and say, "There's no point in being on mainframe." You know, and, and and the fact is this, which is, customers don't go through. You know, we talk about the waves of innovation, and they don't go from platform one, two, and three. As a large-scale enterprise, they actually have use cases, and there might be a guy who's fat, dumb, and happy sitting running his mainframe because he has a catalog, and it's the best thing to run his ATM systems. Mm -hmm. So why the hell do I need to move forward? Right, and then there might be another division inside that enterprise is exactly the same way, saying, hey, I'm in traditional backup because of the policies, the way it works, and the execution. And there might be another division that's basically forward thinking, and they're looking and saying, you know what, it's a brand new application, I'm going to the cloud. <laughs> so, so you have to then look at it and say, is there an organization out there can innovate around delivering modernization in you know, current and past technologies to enable a customer to stay whole and so it's the same. This is why I have this uh, affinity to the music idea, because if you take mainframe, let's just call it vinyl or a record deck, right? And, and, <laughs> but it is one of those ones. And then you look at it and say to yourself, okay, so records have a beautiful purity. A lot yeah. of people still have vinyl, uh, which I do. Um, I like the sound of it, but you have to modernize the players, and you also have to modernize the interconnect, because even if the players are the same, they have to connect to the modern architecture that you're in. 
So you have to innovate in that because you've got the great catalog. Actually, you know, it's interesting. Vinyl sales are up. If you look at you know, the interest kicking back to vinyl now, I mean, not the biggest total percentage of the market, but it's huge. It's 58% up. Uh, I think there was six million. I think it was six million um, uh, vinyl records sold last year. And the mainframe, same same analogy. It's just it's just a, sh a shuffling of the of the resources, but still there's demand there. So I got to ask you that question on the, the on the other other side of the coin, which is third platform, green field. I'm going to go to the cloud. Um, Pat Gelsinger yesterday said 92% of the action is still on premise in terms of dollars. You know, still people moving to cloud. Okay, I'm going to architect to the cloud, third platform or whatever. Um, how do I think about that? And two, specifically, this whole flash business. You got all kinds of snapshotting kind of capabilities going on with this new stuff, you know, inline this, and you get all this flash array stuff. Does, what, how does that change the game from yeah. an availability standpoint? How does that affect you guys? So, so it's about uh, metadata and transportation and consumption <laughs> models, right? So yeah. I mean, in other words, you kind of mix them all, yeah, but you're really looking and saying, you know, one is you want to figure out what your cons consumption model is. Two is then you need to figure out what's the best transport mechanism. And you know, if it's actually a traditional backup or it's something like snapshot management, you still want to do it. If it's replication in a continuous array, you want to do it because yep. in some respects you could say sync and share is a, you know, a backup technology. Mm. In other words, it's a replication technology. It is for technology. some customers. Right? It, it, it is, and, and yeah. why should I turn around and say it's not or it is? It's their choice of whether they want to use it as long as we understand how it fits inside the portfolio. I think the important thing is it's all about metadata. Yeah. So in other words, just because you're replicating across doesn't mean you understand where the hell the stuff is. Right, so you still, it's, it's kind of like imagining a Costco's warehouse yeah. where you walk in there, but it basically has no labels and there's no barcodes. So you actually yeah. know somewhere in the warehouse is what you want. But when I always when walk in, I see the big screen TVs. I'm like, I got to get a bigger TV. It's like yeah. somehow they got it, but but we don't see the the, the scaffolding in the background, all that other stuff, right? It's, it's all right. kind of and, and 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 then you look at it and you say, okay, go back to music because <laughs> it's entertaining. What we've seen is CD sales or album sales are actually now going down, even on. Uh, online uh, transactions, online subscriptions, right? So what's happening is people are not digitally downloading albums, they're digitally downloading tracks. Yeah. So tracks are going up, yeah. albums are going down. And in the same way as data, we know data size is going up, but people want the access points immediately for granular access. And so therefore, metadata is king, you have to keep control on it. So then you look at it and say, consumption model, you know, transport mechanism, you need policy management, you need a decent UI, you need a way to control it. And that's really how things change because you have this separation then from how you store it to how you control, how you manage it. It's still it's still a part of the equation. So this goes back down. Dave and I always talk about the services angle. It's one of those things you just got to really lay it out, right? So if you're if in the customer environments, you guys go in with probably a variety of different playbooks. I'm assuming, right? Because mm -hmm. pick your pick your approach. Pretty much is what you're saying. There's a variety of different use cases. There's no one bulletproof. Yeah, and, and, and last year we were talking about the fact that there's no such thing as a single product that does everything. There isn't, and it's yeah. best to have best to breed. What we did do is start packaging up things to the data protection suite. So you can actually, in our world, you can get Networker, Avmar, DPA in. We've actually put Mosey in the in the door of that as well. We're having Simplicity is going to be added in some of the boost technology. So as a customer, they purchase off us. It's a utility model, and it doesn't matter what they want to do as a use case. They can, you know, reuse. I've heard nightmare stories where it's like they're in the budget cycle and they're in the, in the planning, and they go, oh, we've got to add in the planning for the backup recovery and protection piece. It was kind of like a last minute Charlie bolted kind of on, thought, bolted yeah, on the end. So, so, and that causes some problems. And then I've, I've, we've talked with. Uh, uh, Stephen about this before, but but how do you, what do you say to those customers, uh, not to get, to get into that trap? What can they do? Is there a product that you can simplify to get in the front end? Is it a services package? Is it something that you guys done in the packaging as a product that they can buy so they don't get kind of caught downstream? Without, so 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 the uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, kind of, kind of. Okay. Uh, I'm just doing. The no, what, what are you saying? Yeah. Well, <laughs> so I don't, then we're going no, downstream. No, I'm just pretending I understand. <laughs> what it is. And I'll answer it whatever. There you go. There you go. I mean, it doesn't really matter what he's talking about. It's all about me, right? So, so I mean, there's two sides. One is what we just say. Just say vinyl. The, well, and one we say is about the data protection suite. So, in other words, the idea is they might, for instance, they might decide. What I'm, what I'm doubling down on is my virtualized environment, so therefore we've got Avamar, but I've already sold them Networker and DPA, and I've got the Mosey, and they can actually flip their use cases across. So that's kind of one side. The other one is what our sales organization does, it's called V2V, validate the value. So we actually go in, do a consultative deal, we understand what it is, we show them the ROI, and we will go back and show them actually what we did with it. So I think you just need an organization of trust, and for me, that's the whole point of why I love EMC, is we're risk-free motoring. Last question on futures. You, you, you showed a little leg in your keynote. Sorry to use that analogy. 
<laughs> but so talk about a little bit about what you talked about in your keynote in terms of what's coming. So uh, there's, there's a few things. One is we actually talked about what you just described, which is basically how metadata is, is really going to fill the, the rest of that portfolio up. And, and there was a few assets inside of that. And we did a bit of a risky thing. We actually showed um, what I would see as a UI for the future. Um, and it's, uh, we've actually got all of the back pinnings already in place and it will come out fairly soon. Um, but what it is, is it's a mix of management tool and social media and big data analytics. So the idea is that you bring the environment up and it'll actually say, you've got a number of systems that need to be optimized. We understand they're optimized because we know what everybody else is doing with their systems and it'll actually say, we believe that you've got efficiencies that you can gain. If you then click on it, it'll come up and it'll show you which systems need to be optimized, how you can possibly do it. You can have a choice, you can move things around. So it's a real third platform application and that kind of crowdsourcing. So it's taking mm. actionable intelligence. So it's a network of things. So it's actually, it's, it's pretty stunning. Sounds like magic. Yeah, and, yeah. It, and, and, it, and it really is. And it's one of those ones that, you know, once you start to look at it and understand what it can do, there's, there's no end to the scope. But, but, but what I really wanted to solve was backup kind of gets done when you're not at work. Right, yeah, by default, yeah. but all of the tools that manage it, you're assuming you're in, in the office, not sitting in your Jimmy Jams at home in front of the TV. And so you actually want that <laughs> iPad app that gives you the crowdsourcing, the intelligence, and actually does predictive you know, management and maintenance right. for you. And so that's what they're going to end up getting. And that'll be part of the, the portfolio, and it'll extend across each of the products we have. So we're just trying to simplify the environment for them, make it more agile, make it more mobile, and give them choice. Guy Churchwood, CEO, uh, awesome. president of EMC, DPAD division. I'll give you the final word. Share with the folks out there why this year is so important for your group. What's the key thing that you're sharing, and why is this point in time different than, and, than other inflection points? I, I kind of think it's just, um, for me, Backup and recovery has almost been in the, you know, in the basement. You, you know what I mean? It's kind of an infrastructure thing. And I think last year, um, uh, we had a customer or one of the events turned around and said, "We believe that you know, uh, we want to bring sexy back to backup." And so, what I didn't talk about is, what do you do with the metadata? What do you do with the information that you actually store? We then have a data lake. So not only have I got third platform applications that I'm servicing and also creating to manage these systems, but I now have a data store that you can go and you can drill for IT operational forensics. So you actually have use cases that are going to spawn out the back. So it's an extremely transformational year for us. Um, but if you kind of look at the results that we have, you know, on the PBBA, we've gone from, what, 64% to about 67.4%, so we're growing fast. On the software side, we're growing about four times market CAGR, and we've actually jumped you know, into second place and we're a couple of points away, I'm pretty confident by the end of the year that we'll have top slot on that. So the team is just maniacally um, executing against the vision that we have with protection storage architecture and marrying that to consumption models. Execution machine company. You guys claim nice territory <laughs> there, guys, nice space you're defending and growing and yeah, kicking butt. Congratulations, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break here, live in Las Vegas for EMC World 2014, we'll be right back. <laughs>